Executive Focus. I'm Macomb County Executive Mark Hackel. Today's program, we're going to talk about a special feature in Macomb County. When I say feature, it's something I think that adds to the quality of life, in particular dealing with our schools and our school systems. We're going to focus on the ISD. It's the Macomb Intermediate School District, and today our special guest is Mike DeVault. He's actually the superintendent of the Macomb Intermediate School District. Mike, thanks for being with us. It's my pleasure. Delighted to be here. Glad to have you here again. You and I have talked numerous times uh, many for times. many reasons, even back when I was sheriff. Absolutely. Uh, many, many positive experiences in dealing with problems here in the county. Well, you're well known to a lot of people within the county, in particular those that are in the educational field, uh, those of us in law enforcement because of connectivity with kids. But probably a lot of the viewers out there uh, might not really know your background or understand who you are or even what the ISD is all about. So if you can help us a little bit. Well, with uh, I'll just say a couple things about my background. Uh, uh, I've... Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in business and came out of the private sector before joining education and taught accounting and uh, um, had every kind of position from teaching to uh, business to personnel, labor relations, all the way up into uh, the superintendency. And I'm real blessed to uh, work here in the county. Uh, this is a, the, uh, one of the best places, I think, uh, uh, for schools here. And, uh, I've had lots of experiences, and, and the ISD. Uh, the second part of your question is uh, to kind of start with, there's 21 local districts here in the county, and Macomb has 150,000 students. Uh, uh, there's 15 charter schools, and out of that 150,000, there's uh, 20,000 special education children. And the ISD serves uh, many of those special needs children. They also, uh, uh, you'll see our buses on the road moving children around the county. And today, here we're at Glen Peters School, which is a school designed to handle, uh, to take care of special needs children. And uh, I like to say, and, and you and I have said many times before, people choose Macomb County because of, it's a great place for business. It's a great, uh, uh, we have effective local leadership and I think people are attracted to uh, the strong public school system we have here and the opportunities that, uh, that's why I think people choose and s support Macomb schools. Well, how long have you been in this position as superintendent of the ISD? I have been uh, superintendent at somewhere just under two decades, but it uh, seems like a long time, but it goes fast. Uh, I, worked, uh, I worked 12 or 13 years in Utica and worked in Lansing and Mason and Port here and other kind of positions before I came. Uh, and so I've had a wide variety of experiences which have served me well. Like I said, coming out of the private sector and having a business background kind of uniquely qualifies me, I think, to uh, it has been an asset in terms of being able to uh, serve in this leadership position. You know, it kind of coordinates all the different school districts, in particular dealing with the superintendents and uh, pro uh, programs, curriculum, and then obviously the special needs. Uh, when you look at the ISD, when it began, I mean, did it, did it start 20 years ago? Was it? Uh, no, no, it, it, it's an outgrowth. Uh, it's, it, it, the Macomb ISD has a long history. It's been here uh, since basically World War II. There used to be county school systems before that, and the Macomb ISD has served in that capacity a long time. We do the data processing and it has evolved as the county has grown. Uh, uh, the need for our services and support for the 21 districts has uh, just grown immensely over the, over, over the decades. Have you taken on more responsibility than just dealing with uh, special needs? I think everyone's needs? taken on more responsibility. We uh, do the teacher training. We handle all the uh, uh, data processing for all the local districts. We do purchasing on behalf of the local districts child accounting. Uh, there's a whole host of services that we do that are shared amongst the 21 districts that are, are uh, partnership that uh, we think uh, benefit the citizens of, uh, of uh, the county. Well, let me ask you because it's one of those hot topics right now and right. people talking about this whole issue when it comes to police and fire and communities and right. you know you mentioned there's 21 school districts and there's right. 27 municipalities yes. of different sorts in Macomb County but 21 school districts and the question gets brought up often is the, you know the consolidation and merging school districts is that something you get involved in or do you allow the schools and well the we municipalities? do I mean uh, in uh, this county there for instance, uh, just to, uh, you talk about shared services. In, in this county, uh, we have built, along with the county, is a, you know, fiber optic uh, system that networks all 21 districts. It's a way of using our assets to become more productive and more, and more efficient. Uh, uh, we share services. We uh, provide uh, payroll services for our local districts. We do data processing. We do student scheduling. All those things are handled on the network. We think it's better, citizens long before I came here decided it's better to pool the assets and share resources to become to, to uh, do a better job of supporting the school systems at the local level. 
it's similar to what we've recognized in law enforcement. People kind of like that, uh, uh, that sense of community that they have, uh, the local control over their, their, I guess, their schools. But there are certain services when you look at economy of scales wise that we can kind of, I don't want to say relinquish, but we can kind of pool together the various resources, whether it's a SWAT team, uh, central intake, Absolutely. dispatching, Absolutely. things that we can do. And that's what they're Absolutely. doing with the schools right now. Right. I, I mean, uh, for instance, we do the countywide uh, uh, purchasing and bidding of supplies, of uh, software, computers, transportation, fuel, all those things are centralized. And uh, we take the best prices and share them with the local districts. And that way, we're sharing our talent and it's not repeated throughout uh, uh, the local districts. Another one I just, you mentioned uh, cooperations. I mean, we handle, uh, on behalf of all 21 districts, the attendance office. I mean, we work with the probate court, as you know. Uh, for instance, last year we had 1,500 cases. And compared, I mean, compared to other counties, we have all those kind of things that I think contribute to the uh, 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 the overall culture and success of our local districts. Those are things that we work with the county on on a continuous basis. And again, ISD, where is that uh, located? It's off of, of over on Garfield, and it's uh, uh, we we have facilities throughout the entire county. We we have 15 facilities where we rent or we have our own facilities to, to house special needs children. Uh, the, major training over there and all the network systems are housed there in Garfield by the community college and that facility as you know is used uh, by all kinds of folks you yourself have used it I was over there this morning and <clears throat> there was uh, I think 400 senior citizens over there getting some information on strokes and and uh, and as we say all the time it's uh, their building I'm just uh, part of the hired help to uh, keep the place going it's 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 a Macomb County facility We've used that facility for job fairs. Uh, the judges have used it. It's, it's the kind of thing that we wanted to, anything we can do to help children, employees, and, and promote this county, we're all in. I mean, that's, there, there's, there's a greater mission than just education from the ISD. We want to support you and your efforts to grow this county. And, uh, and as you know, anything we can do to help this county during this economic time or to move us forward, we're, that's, those are the kind of things that we're interested in partnering with. You know, I have to back you up on that. I mean, it's not just an educational facility, it's a community facility, and you have, uh, with outreach, allowed for access and uh, support, you know, within that beautiful facility for, for many different events and things that took place. I want to go back to what you said earlier. You were talking about this issue of this county and uh, kind of our, um, our growth and our reputation, and it's right. interesting, over the last uh, 10 years, they had a census um, uh, data came out. Yes. The information indicated there was a tremendous loss of population in the state, in Wayne County, the right. city of Detroit, and many communities throughout the entire state. And we recognize that uh, we're in a pretty uh, peculiar area when we talk about this region, uh, Macomb County being so tied to the auto industry and the challenges we face with manufacturing. We would have expected kind of similar losses that the state had seen as well as uh, the city of Detroit or Wayne County. But the opposite is what actually took place. Exactly there was a 53,000 person oh, yeah. increase in population in Macomb <clears throat> County. And we come to find out that we were the largest growth county in the entire state of Michigan. In fact, the second most uh, growth and increase uh, didn't even have half of that population. And when we do the numbers, if you think about 53,000 people, that's 14 people a day over a 10 year period. 14 people a day over a 10 year period made a conscious choice or decision to move into Macomb County. And the question became, why is that? And uh, as we looked around, it wasn't because of a major manufacturing plant. It wasn't because of a corporate headquarters relocating into Macomb County. We believe it had a lot to do with quality of life issues that people are interested in when it comes to raising a family or, you know, I guess growing a business. Right. And uh, part of that, I think, is the public safety, people feeling safe in their neighborhoods. But without question, I think it's our public education and the school systems that we have here and the way they're run and operated. And I think a lot of credit is to, you know, not only the, uh, the boards, um, those you know, I guess the uh, school districts and how they run it and their superintendents, but the ISD as well. And uh, I think we're pretty fortunate in what we have here. And uh, I think people need to be proud of that here in Macomb County. It's a reason why people want to migrate here and why they feel comfortable raising a family in and around Macomb County. I couldn't agree more because uh, when I talk to my colleagues around the state, they are lamenting losing students. Whereas over that last decade, we're, we're maybe the only kind of that is actually maintain or, or had student growth and that and, and it reflects the comments that you've just said people know where they're going to have a safe quality school environment and they choose it uh, it, it helps both the uh, people choose that for lifestyle and they choose that for quality of programs 
I also know that uh, it's not uncommon to see you at a Friday night uh, high school football game walking around there supporting people and those kind of things symbolize I think a kind of a positive environment Mark I want to compliment you on that another good piece of news I want to tell you <clears throat> is that people are always talking about the performance and I'm happy to report that our high school graduates after five or after five years 60% of our high school graduates have achieved a bachelor's or an associate's degree. That's a very commendable uh, success rate to both the parents and also to the uh, school systems. You know, you hear all this negative news, but I mean, there are some very good things that are occurring. Uh, we have uh, uh, very high test scores in our third through eighth grade. We have four math science centers. Uh, students can go to Macomb Community College. Uh, we talk about people moving to this county. Some people wouldn't uh, are, are uh, surprised to know that we have 60 foreign languages spoke here. So not only is it, I mean, people are know that uh, are gravitated to a place where it's a, uh, there's a positive environment, they can get a good education, they're going to be accepted. So I think there's lots of positive uh, uh, attributes. It's not one single thing that draw people here, but it all, uh, all boils down to, as you say, that safe environment positive place to work and raise a family and I think that those are assets that Macomb has. Extremely unique challenges that we're facing yes, as opposed yeah, to what right. we've seen 10, right. 15, 20 years ago right. and you know you mentioned that about going to the various schools. I'm, I'm a product of the public schools. In right. fact my grandparents were they were part of the Van Dyke <coughs> Public School, graduated right. Warren Lincoln. My whole family was uh, was Lincoln High School graduates and uh, we moved to the northern part of Macomb County. Right. That was basically a Warren Consolidated uh, schools graduate and uh, have had a tremendous uh, interaction and I, I have a love for the public school systems and it's interesting because my father has always had a passion for high school sports and right. uh, even college sports more so than professional sports and we do we pick out a game of the week that we determine not the news times. stations when they say what the game of the week is we decide which one we want to go see and you know we'll go watch a football game but yeah. even knowing all the stats but it's interesting just seeing the, the family the parents and uh, you know just the people that show up and turn up to the, turn out to those things I think are extremely important I think is part of the educational right. process is the uh, you know the involvement with schools but right. um, I want to just uh, take a quick break here and uh, we'll come back in just a second to talk more about the programs that are offered some of the special features of the ISD so stay tuned uh, if you can after this uh, short break I'll be back with Mike DeVault the superintendent of the Macomb Intermediate School District. Did you find the flashlight on the batteries? Yes. Did you make sure we're not missing anything in the first aid kit? Yep. Did you go through the plan with the kids again? Yes. The more you prepare today, the more you'll be able to reduce the devastating effects of a tornado, an earthquake, a power outage, or any other disaster. Get a kit, make a plan, be informed. Visit ready.gov. Welcome back. Again, I'm with uh, Mike DeVault, Superintendent of Macomb Intermediate School District, and we're talking a little bit about the educational programs that are offered through the ISD in and around Macomb County. Uh, again, i got to say it, I think the, uh, uh, the teachers and the uh, programs that are offered here in Macomb County with our public schools uh, is uh, bar none. I mean, it, it, we do have something special here in Macomb County, and I don't just say that because I'm a product of public schools. It's because of the interactions that I've had with the school districts over the years and with people in particular like Mike DeVault. Mike, what are some of the uh, special programs the ISD offers in particular? Well, there's the, the county has several kind of programs that we endorse and support. I mean, uh, uh, there's a career prep that we have, but it's also a more advanced career prep than when you and I went to high school and so forth. I mean, for instance, we have a whole cooperation where a student can take many kind of programs throughout the d different uh, high schools, ranging from, I'll just give you a couple of examples. You can go up to Richmond where we have an AIS heavy equipment program. Students can go up there and learn how to work on dozers, a job ready skill, as well as uh, advanced drafting classes. We have some nursing programs, some health, have some health programs. Those are programs that students can take uh, while they're in high school, uh, as well as comp completing their academic requirements, because we've integrated academics into those career prep classes. So we're, we're all about trying to give students the best kind of choices and opportunities that we can. Now that doesn't mean also uh, that we also uh, operate for kids that need more help. For instance, we have three or 4,000 students that we offer summer school. And it's, I, I'm always accused of uh, ruining kids' summer, but sometimes you want a mom and dad to have an opportunity Absolutely. for a kid to get some extra help with algebra, science, or English. 
Well, it's interesting when you talk about the skilled <laughs> trades, the uh, the skilled trades part. Yes, as right. I go around talking to some of these manufacturing oh, plants yeah. and businesses, exactly. they're looking for you know kids that have that educational piece, and some for some reason aren't taking advantage of that as an opportunity, right. realizing that they're you know they, they can work with their hands. Absolutely. And, uh, even the skilled trades, as we talk to them, programs they offer beyond high school are still available for these kids, where they'll do a lot of the training for them and uh, you know get, allow them opportunities for apprenticeships. So. I think sometimes kids need to think about that as an option. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty good paying jobs. Yeah, you know, they're out they're there. very good paying jobs. And they're really looking for those Absolutely. opportunities. I was at Dakota High School for the football game most recently, and by happen chance I parked my car, and the shop garage door was open. And uh, I was looking at all the uh, uh, the technology that they had in machinery. CNC and, uh, machines. And right. couldn't help but walk in there and uh, talk to the uh, in in individual who ran the program. It was amazing what they have available for these kids. And then to see some of the stuff that they've actually built and some of the photos that they've showed uh, was pretty incredible. Well, it really is. I mean, even the Pankow Center over the Lance Cruz is just the, one of the top programs in, in uh, Michigan and probably all of America. So we have many of those great programs that, that have developed and grown over the over the years. A couple things I'd like to share with you and probably some of the students have heard about. Macomb has uh, ISD along with the local districts have uh, uh, opened international baccalaureate programs. And it's for grades nine through 12. We house one of the programs at Chippewa Valley and the other one is over to Utica High. They have their own or over to uh, Utica schools. Uh, ours is housed at Chippewa Valley. It's 500 students. Uh, that the test scores out of that high school alone, and all students are allowed to participate from all the 21 districts, are the number are out of 760 high schools. They're number two in the whole state. So we're real proud of that uh, ad, uh, advanced high school. I know you had a chance to visit there the it other amazing. day. It was amazing. The first time I, I heard about it, never saw it, and when I got to walk through the halls and talk to some of the kids and even some of the teachers, I was amazed uh, at what they had to offer there. And again, I think what people didn't realize because I did not is that there's kids from all different school yes. districts that apply for this, and it's pretty competitive. Exactly. And they accept, I think it's 125, up to 125 each, for each ninth grade Each session. year, right, right. And it's, uh, they get uh, both advanced uh, international baccalaureate degree as well as their local high school degree. But it's another example of the districts coming together, sharing services. We share the teachers, we bring them in and bring them out, find the best teachers we can. So we're real proud of that program and, uh, and what it's done for the county. And it's another one of those things where someone, if they're, considering moving to Macomb County and say, oh, okay, I, that's, it's good to know that those kinds of continuum of services there. It's, it's a, from uh, special ed all the way up to this, to, to this kind of program. Another one that we're very, very proud of that we've worked with uh, uh, Jim Jacobs, the uh, community college president, is called the Middle College. And that's a program where they can start in 10th grade and we keep an extra year and they dual enroll and, uh, uh, and hopefully by the end of those two, two or three years, they'll have 60 credits. You actually can start now uh, and uh, have an associate's degree paid for by uh, using the school funds right now uh, when you graduate. We're very excited about that program, particularly during these tough economic times. Uh, we've got some staff over there. They have a, 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 a they each get a, each kid gets a laptop. They're able to work right in the, a learning lab and take college classes. And I'm happy to report that uh, the high school students who are in that program, their GPAs. Uh, uh, exceed some of the uh, college kids that are already there. So they, we, we uh, students with all kinds of abilities go there and, and they're able to get both uh, college credit and possibly an associate's degree and save their parents some money and, and transfer on to some universities. So well, aside from online, and a parent and or a student, if they're hearing this or listening to this, right. they can actually uh, get information probably from their host high school? From their host high school counselor. There's a, 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 each uh, 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 February when you're resting for classes, generally, you know, high school kids go and see their high school counselor. It should be on the uh, uh, one of the options that each high school talks about. It's a it's a cooperative agreement with all 21 uh, of our districts. They're all in. We share the assets. The ISD runs it on behalf of the 21 districts. And again, it's one of those things where we use our assets, become efficient, effective, and uh, uh, give kids and parents a, a, a chance for another alternative to get a good education at the community college, save some money, not pay the high college fees that you would if you went to Michigan State or, or uh, uh, University of Michigan, but you can transfer those credits. And it's an outstanding uh, initiative here that, uh, uh, that we've had growing here for the last two or three years. And we, think, and we just see, I, I just think it's gonna expand uh, uh, because uh, uh, the, the need to get skills, both career prep, academic, to move forward in the job environment and uh, help uh, grow this county. I mean, well, kids, kids, we're educating kids. They, they want an opportunity. They want a 
chance for a job. They want to stay here. They want to grow just like their families are. I mean, I don't think it's any different than when you went to high school. There's a tremendous uh, loyalty and desire for kids to be successful here, contrary to what sometimes you might read in some of the newspaper articles. Yeah, I try not to read this. <laughs> but it's actually interesting when you talk about the, you know, the changes and opportunities that are there right. from back when I was in high school, right. you know, and uh, the days that have changed, and in particular right. dealing with Macomb Community College. Right. And it kind of goes beyond just our K through 12 yes. programming. But here in Macomb County, we have a unique opportunity yes. to have higher education yes. opportunities for yes, kids. We do. You know, with a uh, probably a, one of the most premier two-year institutions in the entire country, right. if you look at it, Macomb Community College. Right. And again, uh, fortunately, I have one of the former presidents, Al Lorenzo, working on my yes. staff. But uh, Dr. Jim Jacobs does a right. marvelous job of offering programs and has taken that to uh, to a new level. Uh, I'm talking about, you know, this university center that's offered right. and uh, opportunities for people to get a bachelor's degree, master's degree, right here in Macomb County in our own backyard. So it's a two-year institution, but with a lot of four-year opportunities. And this program here, you're talking about. Uh, for kids to actually be in high school and start working towards a, uh, you know, an associate degree right. and having it pay for it. Right. Well, exactly. I tell you, that's something parents need to be looking into and kids need to be taken advantage of. Right. What a great jump start for for yeah, many of them. It's 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 it's, it's another it's it's a good alternative for kids to pursue. You know, it doesn't mean that you can't still stay in the high school and you can go and and get everything you need, but you need to have some alternatives for parents and, and students to choose. And, and we're trying to be as flexible as we can to the parents because. That's who we work for. I mean, that's who I work for, is uh, for, the, for the moms and dads of this county. And I think we're always trying to look for ways of, of giving them better and more effective uh, well, How do you do that with all the, uh, the fund, <laughs> you know, the issues dealing with funding? And we'll talk about a Miller right. issue that might right. be coming up here. Right. But you talk about some of the, uh, it's, it's highly publicized, talked about in the news and in the neighborhoods and at the school districts. There's been a, a tremendous challenge there when it comes to it funding. It is a big challenge, too. And, and, and you and I were talking during the break. I mean, uh, there's a lot of good things, and they, this is also tough economic times. Uh, one of the things that uh, people don't realize is that uh, we work with uh, people out of your office and, and different agencies because there's 800 homeless children here in the county. They have to be taken care of, and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, we have people that try to give them education because they're moving, as you know, and hotels and places like that. And uh, uh, we have summer camps for those kids to get food and nutrition and to learn things. So. Again, it, it's not just any one segment. I mean, when you, I mean, you've got responsibilities for like you do for the entire county. There are all kinds of needs which you have to address, and that's just one of the things that that uh, uh, people might not be aware of that that we're in charge of is taking care of those children also. Yeah, because they, they, a lot of people don't see it, they don't really recognize it, but there are, are a lot of families and a lot of people out there, in particular children, who are in need, uh, you know, as you mentioned, some right. of them homeless, that right. are actually, right. we're trying to give right. them educational opportunities in the county through the ISD, but also even those that are challenged for, you know, having uh, meals, you know, exactly. uh, paid for. Exactly, exactly. I mean, that, those numbers have got to be increasing. They are They are increasing, you know, the uh, socioeconomic is, is uh, tough, there's no doubt about it, but uh, like I said, uh, People, there's lots of community agencies that we work with, you know, the uh, volunteer agencies, the churches, and so forth. We work with them, uh, and uh, like I said, it's just it's about. And I mean, you open it up; it's talking about the culture and the drive and values here in the county, and all those things contribute, I think, to those kind of efforts. Yeah, and it's incredible, uh, just the efforts that you put forth. But you know, I got to give credit to a lot of the uh, when we talk about the uh, educational opportunities and the challenges the teachers have been facing oh, yeah, as well. Definitely. And uh, you know, I think people kind of look at public employees right now, and right. for some reason, there's a you know a lot of criticism and yeah, some yes. people challenging because of you know their contracts and their you know right. pensions and retirements and their wages. But uh, really, if you look about you look about this uh, state, you know, we want quality educators educating our kids, and to do that, you've got to pay for that kind of quality. And uh, I. I I have a real hard time when people, you know, keep, uh, you know, with that, that type of criticism that comes uh, their way, uh, realizing, you know, what, having been a product of public education, I was very fortunate that have, you know, very quality teachers at that time, and uh, seeing that there still are, uh, I just don't think the criticism lends itself well. It, I'd have to agree with that. I mean, it, it doesn't mean that, you know, that uh, some of the criticism could be due and uh, justified because of some employees, but overall. I think uh, you, from the, the results, the test results that I just did, I mean, the performance, I mean, it's a good product coming out. And there's no substitute for a dedicated, nurturing t uh, teacher for your child. And I've said many times, you know, from, I mean, if, well, it, it doesn't matter if I'm talking to executives that run corporations or somebody that uh, bags groceries. I mean, a mom and a dad that has a third or fourth grader 
wants that kid picked up on the bus in the morning, wants them taken to a safe environment, wants a nurturing teacher there with all the supplies, because they have, school represents hope for their children. And uh, whether it's a special ed kid or, or an advanced placement child, we, they want the best that they can have for their kid. Because it's tough enough competing in this world without those kind of advantages. And uh, so those are all things that we, that we never forget about in terms of our values, in terms of our, of our vision, in terms of trying to move this county forward. I need to think about it. I mean, that's why I think 53,000 people in a 10-year period, Absolutely. 14 a day over Absolutely. a 10-year period, moved to Macomb County is because of the safe neighborhoods, the safe schools, and the quality of education that they're getting. I think people right. migrate to this area for that very reason. Yes, I do. And uh, I, I got to use a side benefit to it. I mean, I think, you know, when we talk about the schools and uh, even the cost of schools, it adds value to your property and yes, uh, to your home as well. And I think sometimes forget, people forget about that. But we do have an initiative that's coming up, and I think it's November 8th, if yes. I'm not mistaken, and it's a ballot proposal. Yes. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity just to speak a moment about it. And I'll just kind of repeat some of the statistics. Uh, you know, we've had a 500 in 500 percent increase in autism, uh, and and low weight birth babies are now surviving at 23 weeks. One out of every seven of our students get special education services. And this county has a legacy of supporting special needs children since World War II, long before I got here, strong support. And, uh, and as you mentioned before, there's been some reductions in funding. Property taxes have declined. Uh, the local school districts, the 21 districts, have lost, I think, around $100 million in terms of state, federal, and local revenues. So the superintendents and school boards and, and other parent groups have asked us to submit to the voters uh, 1.2 mills for the November 8th election. It's one-fourth of what the districts have lost. The teachers have taken some concessions, and we think that uh, this is a modest request. We hope people would uh, look at it, get the information, and share it with their neighbors. And uh, like I said, there's, this uh, county has, uh, it's about, for the average homeowner, it'd be around 20 cents a day. But I, 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 I just think that uh, people are supportive of the school, supportive of special ed, It'll help uh, all students in the county because it'll offset some of the costs of uh, special education and general buildings. So, you know, we just ask people to take a look at the information and, and uh, 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 look at it in terms of whatever their view might be on that particular issue. And I would hope they'd consider it an understanding of how important it is to Macomb County. In other words, this is the reason why people like to come here is for those very right. reasons. So right. sometimes uh, there's always a cost to uh, the public services that are provided, whether it's police, fire, EMS support, right. roads, right. and obviously our educational right. systems. But um, we'll try to get the message out. But Mike, I want to thank you again thank for you. being here on our show. More importantly, I want to thank you for all that you've done uh, for the many years with the ISD, and uh, in particular with our school districts, our school boards, and to the teachers that are out there possibly listening. Thank you for what you've done. Uh, you've done remarkable for me over the uh, uh, past uh, several years as being uh, obviously a public uh, servant. And I want to thank my former teacher of first grade, Mrs. Heiss. If she happens to be out there somewhere listening because she was one of those that really set the okay, tone for there you go. behavior Every, Everybody has a that's son, right. that's right. So, but again, I want to thank you uh, for joining us once again on Executive Focus. Until next time, have a safe day.